Hollywood is being rebuilt by artists not afraid to disrupt the status quo, telling fresh stories and bringing to life characters who until now have been confined to the margins. This is Emerging Hollywood. Peace to the planet. I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. And my guest today, you may know her from Orange is the New Black. You may know her from Russian Doll. Dasha Palanko. Dasha, what's happening? How you doing? How are you? How you feeling today? I'm good. Okay. okay. I, I feel good, too. Good. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. You know, good seasons energy. are changing. Yeah, that's what it is. People are waking up. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. A new season. When did you realize that acting was a viable career path for you? When I got the opportunity in Orange. Really? Yeah. So you didn't take it serious until then? Hell no, no. I was making money in the in in the hospital as a manager, working in the operating room and being mm -hmm. in charge. And I was doing my masters and bachelors in, uh, towards nursing. So I was like, I'm not gonna take this inconsistency serious now. I have to make sure that I'm good and that my family's good. I'm a hustler. I need to go get it. Mm -hmm. So if I can't go get it and tell you, yo, I have to do this. Give me the opportunity. This is my, my credentials. I already have my credentials. Let's go. That's how I was in, in the health field, right? Yeah. So you never had any dreams of being an actress whatsoever? Yeah, when I was, since I was little. Okay. But I just didn't see it because it's not something that It wasn't that happening you, for you, fast. Hell, no, it's just I was very scared of being told that I wasn't talented enough or that, or that I couldn't do that because I love it so much. Mm. So right when you was about to give up, you go out and audition for Orange is the New Black. No, I auditioned for other things. Okay. I, I was at the time I was with my fiance and there was this whole thing that we thought was a scam, like the school called BIH. And I went there to like um, study the auditioning process. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started auditioning. So then I auditioned for a movie. I got the first movie, which was Give Me Shelter. And then I booked a show, booked another show as guest stars roles. But it was so inconsistent. It was like one year here, one year there, and then when I decided to say I'm going to go forward, do my I was doing my clinicals for my nursing, that's when I decided to audition for one last time. I'm going to audition for this, okay, fine. But I was already perceiving, like I'm very, like I, I read a lot of energies. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel transparency from the beginning, like I feel like I like to get my feelings hurt, <laughs> bluntly. I do. Yeah, because I'd rather you just tell me straight up, yeah, I yes like, or no. Yeah, I like the bluntness. Yeah. I like for you to tell me, no, girl, you need to like lose 10 pounds. I know yes. people are not going to say that. But you, in order for you to be a superhero, I need to see all your musculoskeleton. Yeah. Okay, let me see the abs. Then I'm like, all right, then I have to, if I really want it, I have to go get the abs. Absolutely. But you don't get that. So for me, it was very uncomfortable to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're great. And then you don't get a call back. So when you did get the role, did you ask why you got it? Yeah, I was like, are you? I wasn't shocked. First of all, I was crying like crazy. I was like, oh, because my manager was more excited than I was. And he was like, oh my God, your life is going to change. I was like, no, it's not. But what, what was interesting is that I kept my job. That's how much I did not trust this industry. Mm -hmm. That I was like, I'm not going to put all my eggs in that basket and just be an orange. I'm going to continue to work in the hospital. And I'm also going to continue to work on the show. I'm going to maneuver myself either way. But then when it got the traction that it did after first season, and then I got the opportunity to renew for second season, then it was too much for me to handle. And I had to make a decision. They made it for me. They let me go. They fired me. Um, and then I decided to say, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to do it. But did they tell you why you got the job? Like, as you said, if they tell you no, then they'll say, oh, because you don't no. look like this. But they didn't say, hey, we hired you because of no. these reasons. OK. No. Gotcha. So you just got the job because you got the job. All right. <laughs> how did you build up the confidence to not compromise and be confident with how you look and who you are, everything about yourself? Damn, that's a hard question about Charlemagne the God. <laughs> it's a hard question because I, I think that I question, okay, well look, there's certain things that I'm confident about that I focus on, like mm -hmm. um, like my hygiene and how I smell. <laughs> 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 and I love that I smell good, hashtag right. it. And so I, I'm very confident about that. I have a, a great nose, I love fragrance, and that keeps me motivated, like, yo, just focus on that. You could go somewhere and look a hot mess, but if you smell good, people are not gonna, they're not even gonna know. Right. And then everything else that I don't like, I've had to like really sit myself down and like speak to my therapist and say, like, I don't like my body. And then the questions come in, but why don't you like your body? And those are the things that you have to focus on, like, and realize, well, maybe that's not as important, you know, anymore. And then things happen in your life. Like, you lose family members. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I lost my mom. And I'm like, is it really worth me focusing on things like this that fucking stay? It goes to show that we waste so much time focusing on everything external and not 
appreciating the moments that mean so much more for yourself, for your spirituality, for your, for your soul. And I've lost so many moments like that. Like this ride, you know, Orange is coming to, came to an end, mm -hmm. right? And there were so many factors around you that obviously you have to pay attention to, but you don't take that one moment to say, wow, I really love this, or like, I'm enjoying this, or like, look today and like focus on that because we're so distracted in so many ways. And it went by so fast. Yo, so quick. Yeah. Like we're getting older now, I feel. Like time passes by faster now with social media. I mean, check this out, right? Even music. Mm -hmm. There's like 7,000 tracks being put out. You know that. Absolutely. Because the demand versus what the supply is, is higher. So now it's like everything, information, 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 information is just put out there. It's like we lose the sense of the real moment or what we're supposed to like experience there. Now, where do you think the state of uh, Latin representation is in film and TV right now, currently? Currently, I think you it's- feeling it? Mm, if I'm feeling it? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm lucky to be in it, but I think that there's a lot more work to be done. Gotcha. I think that um, the stats speak for the masses. I think simply by you just scrolling down IMDb and seeing the movies that are about to come out and who is in lead roles and who's representing what, mm -hmm. it will tell you a lot. I mean, it's still 3%, right? 18% purchasing power for mm -hmm. Latin community, mm -hmm. but we're still 3% of what we see. So the Afro-Latino got to be lower than that then. Oh yeah, definitely. You put me on to what Afro-Latinos were. So how you was this? remember the... that? I do remember that. That's a good thing. <laughs> I, love, I love that we can learn from each other. We can educate each other. I'm Absolutely. always open to learning new things. I think that this is a great time for people to take advantage of having access to so much information, right? And being able to research your own information. And... Yeah, I remember that conversation because when I asked you, because I, I never had heard the term. So I said, what is Afro-Latino? And everybody called me stupid and ignorant and dumb. And I'm like, that's why you ask questions. Yeah. You know? Does that ever bother you that people like, does it um, hurt you? Nah, it, it, it only because I'm like, when have we gotten to the point in our society where it's wrong to ask questions? Because I always think that it's dumb when you don't ask questions, when you act like you know when you really don't know. So then you just continue in your cycle of ignorance. Once you tell me what Afro Latino is, now I know. And knowing is half the battle, right? Very interesting. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt you? Um, you I think a little bit. Yeah, okay. a little bit. Because I feel like I get hurt too when people yeah. like are, are quick to insult you for you doing what you feel is best for you. Absolutely. Instead of like trying to understand where it's coming from or just let it be. I think sometimes we just have to accept things for what they are. But that's why I stay on social media though, because I feel like we're all in verbally abusive relationships with our smartphones. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> we're already in those situations with our careers. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So I feel you. So what do you think the state of Afro-Latino representation is? Right now. It's still, um, I don't know the exact sets on it, mm -hmm. but I definitely know that for me and my experience, I'm still not enough okay. or don't fit the role. I think that coming from a show like Orange was a beautiful thing where it gave opportunities to many ethnicities, sizes, images, stories, stereotypes to be told in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very thankful for that. But I, I think that the opportunity was because it was for uh, inmate, and I think it's more acceptable to see someone like me as an inmate Ooh. than to see someone like me in a different role because that's not what our perception is or we're taught to see um, as far as on TV. You sure. know what I mean? Like, yeah. we only saw a certain type of lawyer on TV. We only saw a certain type of nurse on TV. We mm. only saw a certain type of superhero on TV. This is only my experience and what I'm saying. We only saw a certain type of newscast, you know, even on, on Spanish channels. You know what I mean? I only saw a certain type of image and certain type of people that fit certain type of roles. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to like how I look, right? And not the talent. I think that I consider myself talented. As an artist with a talent, I think that it's important for you to establish your toolkit and how you keep your instrument sharp, yes. right? Across the board. But I also think that- You gotta have something natural. Yeah. Like a natural tool, a natural You have kit. to have what I call that essence, mm -hmm. what I call that emotion, that passion for what you do and not the fruits of it. I think some people have the passion for what the fruits are and not necessarily the message or what you're saying, what you're, as an artist, portraying or expressing. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you think it's possible to make a cast as diverse as Orange is the New Black if the setting is not jail? Yeah. Okay. I just think that it's more acceptable because it's jail. Mm, gotcha. Because you have a place like The Office that was a success. It could have been as diverse as Orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, like, 
Like, I don't understand why it's so hard for people to, like, believe stories. When you go to school, when you go to restaurants, when you go to, like, I don't know, DMV, mm -hmm. there's a lot of diversity. You can make a show about the DMV, uh, whoever makes that, you know, including me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's a lot of people living in bubbles. So it's hard for them to see the world for as diverse as it is. Because everything they see is a reflection of them. So that's the kind of art they tend to make, or even green light. Because mm -hmm. that's the way they see the world. You know? So sometimes you got to step outside that bubble and see the world for what it really is, which is a diverse place. Yeah. Now, I, I see you use the hashtag uh, self-lovery. Yes. On social media. What, what does that mean to you? Self-lovery is this whole process that I've um, discovered at this stage in my life, mm -hmm. as a mother, as a woman, as a sister, as just being a human being and knowing that when it comes to loving yourself and self-acceptance and being able to understand that there's other diversity in the city, it comes down to how truly you see yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a son and I have a daughter. And I felt that we, as feminists, you know, I, I believe in, in, in the feminist movement. I believe it, but I also believe that I, I don't like excluding. I like to be as inclusive and to educate, okay? And so for me to do that and for me to, to teach my son and my daughter equally, I have to involve them both in the process of what really is accepting yourself, what is loving yourself, what is respecting others, what mm -hmm. is understanding um, the equality in a household, whether you're a female, whether you identify with no gender, whatever it is, there has to be a, a level of acceptance and that acceptance comes from within. Absolutely. I always say your first, last, and best love is self-love. It's hard. Yeah. Because there's moments that I wake up and I'm like, Ugh, I can't stand myself. What I want to share with people is that this is a struggle that I consistently have to deal with every day. Gotcha. And there's days that are good and days that are bad. Mm -hmm. Whether it's fi whether it's struggles with how I look, whether it's struggles like, damn, I'm never going to be skinny. Why do I really want to be skinny? Do I want to be skinny because I want to be on... A lead? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I love I love what I do. Yeah, I love acting. I love singing. So am I going to get more opportunities by me being skinny? Well, that's what I see. When I go back to the auditions that I've done and I haven't gotten and I go back and I see who they casted, they all are either models or size zero or like fair skin, jet black hair or whatever it is, nice, you know, physically they don't look like me. So when you tell me that we went another route and it's not because you did great and you did excellent and you, oh my God, you're amazing, you're gonna be a star, but will you cast somebody else? Then it kind of questions me that your feedback is not really genuine. What it's telling me is that you're just giving me feedback to give me feedback. Mm -hmm. Well, what are some of the things you hear people say that they don't even realize are offensive to Latinos, Afro-Latinos, Latinx, just in general? I think that offensive is when you say that they're not black. I think it's offensive when you say that their story doesn't matter. I think it's offensive when you say, well, what are you? That doesn't make sense. Well, well, actually, if I was geographically, geographically speaking about where I'm from, I'm from, I'm from the Caribbean. You know, I'm not even in Latin America. I'm in, I'm in the Caribbean Sea. So, you know, I, I know I have my African, I embrace my blackness, but for you to feel like you need to exclude me when I include myself in it, mm. you know what I mean? Like if I include myself and say that I'm proud of my blackness, I'm proud of my Taino-ness, of all my influences that I've had historically, right? You know, like I did that DNA test mm -hmm. and I'm 36% Molly. So for me, it was like, there you go. Do you think it, <laughs> and I needed this test to do that? I, do you think I needed to provide? Like, it was so blatant for me to see that and to embrace it. So if I embrace that, what makes you feel that you have the right to exclude me from what I'm embracing. And if that's who you really are. I also think that it's offensive for um, our stories not to be taken serious or feel like we don't have a platform as Latin people in this industry. I think we have a huge platform right now in the music industry. The Latin music is killing the game. And the fusion that we've been able to create from the Latin to America, we have artists collaborating that we never would have thought in the 90s we would have been collaborating. And it's happening now. Is it something that you feel like you still have to prove yourself to those people when things are showing that they work? Yeah. Culturally, we're so many years behind. We've been kept that way. Mm -hmm. What's empowering you right now? Like, what's keeping you motivated? The message that I want to send out. And for those that, that feel like, because that's what I felt, I felt like, yo, I'm coming to this game so late, you know, and in Hollywood, you know, aging doesn't help you. Good thing that I have, you know. <laughs> you know. 
You got uh, J-Lo jeans. You know what it. I'm saying? I got my African jeans, baby. Okay. You know? <laughs> um, so for me, I'm, I'm blessed. But it's important for me to catch up and stay relevant and, like, get this money and do what I have to do and be able to make this something that I could do for the rest of my life. All right. So how do you hope to keep using social media to empower young women around the world? I want to empower people around the world. Okay. You know, and, and I want to connect with people. I don't like superiority when it comes to the human race. I don't like to feel inferior. I like to feel connected with people regardless of where they are. I like to be able to like show my different moments, different facets. I think that I'm very imperfect and I think we all are. And I could be hood, but I could also be classy. Ratchet and righteous. Of course. Yes. Why not? Double R. There you go. R-rated. Absolutely. I love it. It's the perfect balance of life. Now, what's next for you, other than music? Uh, I'm auditioning in the Heights. Mm -hmm. That's something to look forward to. What kind of roles are you auditioning for now? I've auditioned for so many things. But no, I'm, I'm, I want to audition for things that are not expected. Mm. You know, my dream role is to be a superhero. I would love to be a superhero because of what, you know, what it entails, right? But I definitely want roles that are putting me forward in a very strong presence um, and representing me in not a typical way. Like, I don't want to be the drug dealer, um, the typical Dominican drug dealer, that part of that story. You know what I mean? If, if we're going to tell stories, I want it to be culturally impactful. Absolutely. You know, I want to do comedies. It doesn't have to, every, not everything has to be serious. No, so I'm open to anything. And I'm also creating, you know, I'm, I'm working with, with some writers. I'm working with Sofia Quintero. I'm, I'm working with Lemon Anderson and creating our own things and creating our own, you know, because I think it's important that in order for me to get the opportunity for these roles, we have to start establishing the importance of having writers that are Latinx, producers that are willing to also produce, mm -hmm. that understand this story. Talk to me about the Central Park Five. When, when do you first remember hearing that story? I was too little. Like, yeah. I, I don't think I, even, uh, I was here in the States still. Mm -hmm. So I, I heard it now. I know there was a documentary that I watched. Those are the things that make me really frustrated when it comes to stories like that. They have little interviews within, you know, people that were part of it, of, of the show and how they feel. And I broke down crying because I was like, you know, mm -hmm. it's so frustrating for us to see the injustice of our people and for us not to be educated to the masses, for this information to not reach the masses. Why are we only hearing about this now when this happened back then? Like, why is this only spoken about now? So that story, being part of it and not remembering it was very important to me because it, it allowed me to be part of something that means so much. Yeah, is it hard to get something like that out your spirit though? Because when you look around, at the world, stuff like that is still going on. There's days that I'm spicy in the street, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, excuse me? You want what, the salt or what? You want the salt or the pepper? Like, don't ask me for simple things because I might take it the other way. Yeah. You know, but I know that I could only control but so much, but I have, a, I have a voice. And as small as I may be right now, I know it's the beginning of my career and as unexpected things are, right, for mm -hmm. me to do, I know that I have a purpose and I have this this power of being able to speak to people and like connect in a different way, in a spiritual way. So I feel like if I consume myself with everything that's going on and I don't contribute to the solution, then I'm kind of falling into that dark space. Yeah, you're part of the problem. Yeah, I have, you have to evolve from that. You can't mm -hmm. just, because it will consume you. It's like a cancer. Mm -hmm. So if you stay looking at the world like this, like everybody, this is what's, you have to be aware of it but you also have to find how are you going to make this beneficial for our race? Mm. What are you going to contribute to make this, what happened, beneficial for us? It's, it's like finding, you know, the positive outlook on everything. That's which a lot. is hard. Yeah, and that's a lot of weight to carry. It's a lot of weight to yeah. carry. But damn, like, if you speak about it, if we have these interviews and, you know, we could build these networks. We, we, we have like people like Ava that say, yo, what do you have? What do you have? What is this? What is that? Come on. That's the power of it when we unite, right? What's the role in the Heights? <laughs> I play one of the girls in the salon. You know, I auditioned for it. It's my first musical movie. I got myself my little vocal coach so I could train, you know, my instrument again and start working with him, Terrell, and he's amazing. 
plug. Gotta plug them in all the time. But it's a great story, and, I, and I'm excited to work with Lynn and excited to work with so many people. When you're a guest, you can only do so much, right? You can only learn from that, mm -hmm. take advantage of that, and then when you create your own things, you know what to do correct, right? Listen, you have to know what battles to fight, mm -hmm. what to learn from each that you cannot, so that when you have your own moment, you know what to correct and how to move forward mm. correctly. That's my little strategy. Right. You know, right now I'm quiet. Gotta be careful. When somebody's quiet and observant, they because they're learning. Yeah, listening and learning. They're learning. We don't do enough of that no more. No, you don't. We're very quick to run our mouths. Absolutely. There's a lot of things going on in social media sometimes that people are like not respectful with certain things, certain situations, and we need to just take a step back and think before you talk. <laughs>